Hi guys, if like me you've been trying to set up your Minecraft Bedrock server on your Solology and I've been tearing your hair out, this might be the video to you. More after this. Hi guys, this is Will, CTA Systems, ctasystems.com, hope you're well. Um, since Christmas, which is only a few days ago, I've been trying to set up a Minecraft server on my Synology. Um, just because it's a local device, me and my little lad want to play um, a shared game together and he wants to let some of his friends play on the same thing as well. And we all know you can go and buy one, but if you've got a Synology, you might as well make use of that. Now, I've been tearing my hair out over this little issue, which should have been really quite straightforward and simple, but turned out to be a little bit of a nightmare. So uh, I did a lot of YouTube checking, Googling, finding out uh, whatever I could find. So I just thought I'd talk you through the process of setting up a bedrock Minecraft server on your Synology, not the Java version, a bedrock version. Now, thankfully, uh, one of the videos that was most helpful to me on YouTube was Mark Tonsing. Um, he has been, which is Mark TV, a uh, lovely, lovely German fella, um, and he helped me immensely. I commented so many times in his video to the point where he ended up calling me through Messenger and just helping me sort this mess out. So I'm going to go through the process with you of setting everything up, including the server properties and the whitelist JSON. Uh, J -S -O -N. Um, so I'm going to go through that with you now. What you're going to need, of course, you're going to need a Synology, and you're also going to need... Um, to download the package called Docker. Now I've already got it installed, but all you do is you go to the package center on your Synology itself and just do a search for Docker and then hit enter. And you can see there, yours will say install. Uh, of course, all you need to do once it's done that is install it. I'm now gonna open it exactly as you would do. You'll get this screen popping up here. Um, and the first thing you want to do is you want to go to registry, okay, and it will bring up lots and lots of things. Now, there are many, many Minecraft things on there, but some of them are Java and some of them, of course, are Bedrock. Um, and in this case, we're working on Bedrock. This is for PC, this is for, um, you know, your iPad, your, your Android phones, whichever, they'll all connect to this, no problems at all. Um, so, what I want you to do is to search for Mark's own um, Docker image by just typing in Mark TV and you should find that if you just do a search and you can see here this one here Mark TV Minecraft Bedrock server uh, for the pocket PC uh, pocket PC how old is that PE pocket edition okay so all you do on that is you click on download now I've already got it downloaded so I'm just going to go on to image here okay where you can see it is the same one that I've got there okay and all you do is you then click on launch and then you give it a name okay now it can have any name so I'm just going to create some random name at the moment so I'm just going to call it um, um, test hyphen server okay now there's a few things we recommend that you put on there is to enable the resource limitation set it to high you can leave that at 1024 if you want. I personally, as of what Mark did, um, I set it to 3072. Hit advanced settings, tick enable auto restart. So if your server does switch off, it will automatically restart the Docker and therefore your Minecraft server's up and running as well. And then what you wanna do is go to volume, okay? Now in this instance here, this is where, um, well, I'll come back to it in a second, but if you go to add folder, make a folder called docker and now there's the root of my synology okay so make a folder called docker yeah and in there you then want to go create folder so if i just expand that and go create folder and i'm going to call it test server again doesn't really matter what you call it at this point okay and then i'm going to go select okay then you need to go to your network to your port settings now in this instance, you can automatically change these to 19132, which is the standard port for your uh, Minecraft server. However, when I try and do this in a second, it's going to tell me there's an error because I've already got two of these servers set up. So I'm actually just going to choose a different port 
I'm going to call this 21132 because I know I've got one that's already on 19132 and 20132. So I'm going to go 21132. Yeah. And I'm going to leave it at that. Now, the container port, which is the internal port, leave that alone. You don't need to change anything on that. Just that port there, okay? You don't need to do anything with links. You don't need to do anything with environment. As long as you've done everything that we've gone through there. And you hit apply. Oh, sorry, my mistake. You need to type in, in here, bedrock hyphen server forward slash worlds. Worlds, is it worlds? I can't remember. World or worlds. And put a forward slash at the start there. And then hit apply. And that's fine. We hit next. And then apply. That will apply it for you. And that is creating the container which will run the virtual machine, which is your Minecraft. Okay. And if we go to the container here now, we can see that this one that I've just created is now running. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is I am just going to create a Minecraft field. Hopefully you can still see that. So I'm just going to go and create a new server or add a server. I'm just going to call it test server. I'll just use the internal ID just for now. Now, as you can see here, the default port is 19132. As you know, we've just created one, which is 21132. Now, what you will need to do if your friends are connecting in from an external uh, IP, as in if they're not in your home and they are their home or their business or whichever and they want to connect, you will need to enable port forwarding to your Synology. So if your Synology's IP address is 192.168.0100, make sure that you forward the port 19132 or 2132 or 21132, whichever one you're using, to the Synology okay so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do that now and I will just make sure because obviously each router is different so I'm just doing it on my router at the moment if you need any help with this just give me a shout um, but like I say this is all thanks to Mark that I've been able to do this so I'm just enabling that port straight away now I'm just gonna add profile there so, so I'm going to now go to this and hit play and hopefully if it works we will get Minecraft okay but at the moment this is where I hit a bit of a problem what was happening was that I wasn't able to change any of the settings um, I was struggling with the server properties and I was struggling with the whitelist JSON file now what this is going to do now you'll see exactly what was going wrong for me and I was tearing my hair out about this so there you go Minecraft's working fine absolutely great that's lovely but i don't want to uh, i want to go in and change some settings so um i go into that and oh i can't because i'm not an administrator okay so and as you can see here i'm only a member so what you want to do is save and quit the game come out of that now i'll show you how to op um, someone within the Minecraft so you can make them an administrator or an operator I should say uh, instantly so I'm just going to come back to the Synology now okay and what we'll do here I'm sorry if this video is going on for quite a while but you'll you'll understand why so what we need to do now is we need to close the test server okay that I've just created this is really really important that you do it this way around you just point it to the world first and then you then add on the server properties and then the whitelist JSON um, and then it will work I promise you it will work so what I'm going to do now I know I've got a, a copy of these files so I'm just going to go into docker and uh, there's my test server but here's one I created earlier yep and I'm just going to copy server properties and whitelist JSON from there and I'm going to copy it into test server. I'm going to paste into there. That's fine. I now go back to the test server, which by the way, I have stopped. You need to make sure you stop this. Click on that, hit edit, hit on volume. Now here's the important bit, okay? So I'll just clear my notifications. I'm getting lots of them, no idea. Okay, um, so, I'll come back to that. 
basically what you need to do, this is really important, you need to hit add file, not folder, add file. Okay, so we hit add file. I'm gonna go into the test server which you created there and we click on server properties. Okay, now because you've already got half the thing put, put in here, you need to highlight bedrock server and you paste that in there and then you go server dot properties okay that's that one and then you need to add another file and again you go into your test server or whatever you called it whitelist json or json i'm going to paste that in there what confused me is that I didn't realize that this side was um, obviously the local folder and this side is the mountain, which I know it's got mount path there, but I didn't realize there were two separate folders. So I was like thinking, well, why am I gonna put that and then further in the folder? This is how it needs to be. So then we can apply that. And then if you go back to your actual folder way, the, the Docker folder, you probably need to do this on your PC. It's, it's actually easier. So if I just go into the test server, I can now double click on the file server properties. Now your, pro, your computer will probably show it as a weird blank file. Um, you can actually just right click on and go open with and choose notepad. Personally, I use a program called Arani or Arani, uh, something to do with the spider, I'm not quite sure. Um, so if I open this, it opens it up in quite a nice layout. So we here, we can choose what to call it. So I'm going to call it server name, test server, game mode at the moment I've set it as creative. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to call it survival. Yeah, difficulties. My, my wife, my beautiful wife came in the room and then realized that she was going to be on YouTube and promptly left. So um, yeah, we're back to it. So I'm going to change the difficulty to easy or whatever you want it to be, if you want it to be easy, hard, or, or normal, or whichever. And you've also got your allow cheats, which is you can have as true or false. Yeah, I'm going to leave it as true for the time being. Max players, that's up to you. Um, online mode, I'd leave as true. Whitelist, I'd leave as uh, false. The server port, actually, on this one, needs to be 19132. I know that's a bit confusing, but the this is because it's the internal port. Don't change that. That will already be 19132. Believe me, I've learned from my mistake on that one. Um, and everything else, you can give it a name. Um, so I'm going to call it again, level name. I'm going to call it test server. And the default player permission level member, leave that as that is. I know you can change that to operator. I wouldn't recommend it. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Um, and then we're just going to go file and save that okay and then if we go back to the test server and start that up again you'll see what we get okay that's running so I'm going to go back into Minecraft I'm going to go into the server and there's the test server so I'm going to connect to that and then you'll see now that we have it will look, well, it won't look any different. It doesn't look exactly the same, but you're gonna have more options. And I'll show you how those options can be enabled. Okay, there we go. Gonna get there eventually. Okay, so we're back in the game. If I hit escape now, you can see that I'm still only a member, yeah? And the settings, but the settings is now survival. The world name is test server. Um, everything else is still grayed out okay now i can show you how to get around this a very annoying problem so okay so now we've got the game all working um and I, but i'm still classed as a member only we need to make the main player an operator so you can change a few more settings if you need to in the future of course you need an operator in minecraft otherwise it can be quite a boring game so i'm going to show you how to do that now this is important what you've got to do first is have the game running so you've got the server running um and basically i'll just bring that up on my screen now so you can see here resume the game if i hit escape you can see here i am just a member i don't have any permissions or anything like that so what you need to do is 
go to your Synology window, which will be this one here, or if you go to the actual terminal, in fact, I'll just do that, make it easier. So highlight your test server or whatever you've called it. Go to details, hit terminal, you'll get the black window up, yep. And all you have to do is type in op, then a space, and then the player name. So it'll be more than likely a Microsoft um, game attack. Let's spell it right once I'll start again. So op. I hit enter and it now says I'm opt, okay? So if I go back to the game and then go resume game, you can see at the top left there, I've been opt, okay? Now if I hit escape, and then I can see here now I've got my little crown, okay, which means that I'm an operator, so I can make lots of changes and I can literally change the settings, so I can change it from survival to creative to adventure, everything that goes with it because I'm now an operator in there. There's loads of other things you can do with commands. Um, hope this video has been useful to you. And once again, I cannot express how much I appreciate Mark's help on all of this. Uh, if there's anything I can help with, please just get in touch. Um, please like, subscribe and share. And uh, I wish you all the very best. And I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks very much. That's Will CTA Systems, ctasystems.com. Have a great day.